the heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. Jerusalem in Hebrew is Yaru. Shalom. Yaru is the root of the word Torah. It means to throw or teach rain. And the word Shalom means restoration. So the new Jerusalem is those that teach the rains of restoration. <laughs> Amen. The new Jerusalem is the bride, the Lamb's wife of the book of Revelations. Yes. So the bride should be teaching the reigns of Revelation. Yes. Come on. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 So, blow the trumpet in Zion. What is the trumpet? What is the shofar? We are today at Rosh Hashanah. Today is Rosh Hashanah. This is an end time prophecy. Today we're at Rosh Hashanah to blow the trumpet. Some of you believe you're going to hear a trumpet fly away into outer space when Jesus returns. But Isaiah 58, the Lord says, lift up your voice like a trumpet, shofar. The Lord said to Jeremiah, I've made you a prophet and a trumpet. In the book of Revelations, John heard a voice as a trumpet speaking when Messiah revealed the trumpets of the book of Revelation. So the trumpets, the seven trumpets of the book of Revelation are the shofars. The shofars are the prophets to the church. Isaiah 58, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Some of you are waiting for a physical trumpet. And the trumpet's already blowing in this room right now. Amen. Some of you are waiting for something to come, and God's already sounding a trumpet. Amen. And if there's seven trumpets in the book of Revelation, that means there's seven prophetic utterances to the church to try to get the church to wake up before the last trumpet. Yes. Yes. Does anybody know what the last trumpet is? Revelation 10, 7 says this. As the seventh angel was about to sound the seventh trumpet, the secret of God would be finished as declared by his servants, the prophets. So what is the last trumpet that we were all waiting to fly away into outer space? It's the finishing of the secrets, what I'm trying to tell you and teach you right now, by the prophets of God to prepare the church for the glorified life. Seven times seven is 49. The rabbis are saying 
They're taking the 49 weeks, multiplying it by 360 days. Say, see, 360 is the lunar calendar. It's the Hebrew calendar. It's the calendar Yahweh gave us. So you take 49 times 360. It comes to 17,640 days. But in that same word, in that same verse, it said when Jerusalem is restored, the countdown starts. Jerusalem was restored June 7th, 1967. So you start counting from June 7th, 1967, 17,640 days. It falls on September 23rd. Hallelujah. Sukkot is September 28th. So if we count back 10 days to the 23rd, it falls on Yom Kippur, which is the great and terrible day of the Lord. I gotta imagine that this day, God's getting ready to do something else. We listen to Haiti and all these other guys that don't have a clue about this stuff. And yet we have prophetic teachers that understand and are saying, hurry up, wake up, because we only got a year to go. Yes. Starting from tonight, Come on. Come on. we're getting ready. We started a speed of the year right now. Yes. The 49th year, but we're getting ready to go into a jubilee. I pray for our country. God releases a jubilee. Because I'm not here just to teach you a fancy teaching. I'm here to tell you what Rick Joyner and all these other guys are saying right now. That by that time, they're talking about the whole United States economy collapsing. That's right. They're talking about on that day, the last four or five stock markets have fallen on Rosh Hashanah. The last time Rosh Hashanah, uh, the stock market fell, it was on Rosh Hashanah. Right, right. Do you think the Lord might be talking to us? Do you think God still uses his calendar? Yes. Because I'm going to tell you something. If this next stock market falls, there is no coming back. That's right. I don't care what your theology is or what you say. This thing will come. And there, because of our debt, there will never be a recovery. That's right. That's right. I pray out to a God of mercy and grace. And I pray that the church will wake up and take position. Yeah. If the world falls, it's not their fault. It's our fault. Amen. Come on. That's right. You remember the story of Lot who argued with God for Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. Yeah. So if I find ten righteous people, Abraham. yes, Abraham. I said Lot, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Abraham. Abraham's arguing for Sodom. The Lord says if you find just a few righteous people, how about ten people? You all said, yeah, okay. Nine, sure. Eight, yeah. See, the problem wasn't Sodom and Gomorrah. The problem was finding righteous people. Come on. Righteous people with right understanding. There you go. People that renew their mind that could go in and save that city. Yes. Jesus said, if Sodom and Gomorrah would have heard the words that I preach and seen the miracles that I've done, they would have repented long ago. He said, but you will be judged by Sodom and Gomorrah because they didn't get to hear the words which you hear. Right. And we are in a generation that the revelation is coming again. And the Lord is putting an emphasis on his revelation. And he said, if thou were to save Sodom and Gomorrah, I guarantee you the revelation of the kingdom would say Phoenix. It would say South, Southern California, and every other city in our state. But the Lord's looking for people that are willing to grab the revelation of his word. Amen. Jesus only taught him 2,000 years ago. Why do you think they kept calling him crazy? Because he kept teaching in symbolisms. That's right. He kept teaching the secrets of the kingdom. He was bringing the fire. Yeah. And they couldn't get in the fire. Yeah. He was bringing the fire, saints. I'm not here to teach you a message. I'm here to baptize you in fire. Amen. I'm here to get you ready for what's going on. I don't care what anybody else says. If you understand this scripture, you're getting ready to see what God's getting ready to release. Because the Lord spoke to me. He said, tonight it starts. He said last week to me, he said, it starts now. He said, from now to next year, I'm marking the church. I'm bringing my Elijahs. 
They're going to come out of hiding. And they're going to bring the church. Those that will hear the call and be the remnant into this final move. Somebody hearing what I'm saying? Blow the trumpet in Zion. That's the bride. Meaning only the bride hears the trumpet. Only the bride hears the prophet speaking. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Where's the holy mountain at? Our mountain. Your mindset. Amen, sister. Hallelujah. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. It is at hand. The day of the Lord. September 23rd, 2015. Are we ready for that day? Because there's a lot of stuff that's going to transpire from now to then. A day of darkness and gloom, and it's a day of clouds and thick darkness. What's it a day of? Clouds. clouds. What do clouds make up? Rain. Rain. It's a day of revelation. Yes. Amen. Light and the word darkness comes from the word parables and proverbs. Amen. Like the morning clouds. Like the morning clouds. Spread over a mountain of people come. How are these people coming? What's the clouds? Rain. What's the mountains? Our mindsets. These people come like the crowd clouds around people's mindsets. What are they coming to do? They're coming to rain on our minds. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. To pour out the revelation. Deuteronomy 32, let my revelation follow the rain. A people come great and strong. The like of whom has never been. Nor will there ever be any such after them. Nobody in the earth has ever seen these people. That's right. Amen. Meaning Adam. In all of his glory. Didn't look like these people. Meaning these people are created in a greater glory. Than anything that's ever been created on the earth. And even Jesus talks about them. Hallelujah. If you understand the book of Revelation, I'm going to give all that tonight. But there is even a greater glory than anything that's ever been seen released in the book of Revelations. A people come great and strong. The word great is reshbet. That word means to rule, to be a master, to increase. Uh, the picture of the resh is a picture of the head of the bed. Is the picture of the temple representing the family. Combine these mean the head of the family. So these people are great. They're the heads of the family. Who are the heads of the family? Prophets. The apostles are the heads of the family because they're the fathers to the church. So when it says that these people are great, it means they're apostolic generals that have been released back to the church. Somebody hearing the message. These are apostolic men. Ephesians chapter 3, it says these mysteries, Paul says, are given by his apostles and prophets. Amen. Amen. Each family has a master that rules all cases, trials, and conflicts, contests. So that means they're judges. Hallelujah. Also, the fathers sacrificed for the whole family. That means they're priests. So these people that are coming are kings, priests, and prophets. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. In contrast, this person was a representative of the whole tribe, one dominant in authority and wisdom. So these are people of wisdom. Amen. Notice they are captains, and the Bible says, and the, and the Greek or Hebrew it says they're archers. Why are they archers? What's an archer shoot at? Torah. Torah. Meaning these are people that hit the Torah. They have a deeper revelation of the Torah of the kingdom. So these are apostolic men that have a deeper revelation of the Word of God. Hallelujah. They, they have strength, great authority. They shoot the shooter of an arrow from an archer. Notice they, they, the word manifold. Thousands were to shoot the word manifold. Paul talks about now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and authorities in the heavenly angels. So what's manifold? It means the multicolor and revelation of God's Torah that reveals Yahweh. Might be being known by the church to the principalities. Meaning, we are called to show the principalities the glory of God. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. There's a battle coming. Yes. 
And it's going to be a battle with the principalities. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah. Or what happened in the day of Noah? They had to destroy the earth. He ought to destroy the earth because of the Nephilim. The Anunnaki were coming down and having intercourse with the daughters of the earth, creating Nephilim. David fought Goliath. Goliath was a giant. The word for giant is the word Nephilim. Meaning, he was a hybrid between a fallen angel and a human being. Hallelujah. So, Nephilim is the fallen ones. You get to look at the word fallen? Fallen means is the word Nephilim. Meaning the fallen ones are controlled by the fallen angels. Oh, Jesus. Come on. No, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Come on. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Fallen. The world is not fallen. Because the fall, the, the, the earth doesn't know the world. It's in the church. That we know that are the fallen ones. Fall from what? Fall from truth. Because if you look at the word for fallen, it means to fall from the truth. Many shall come in my name, he said. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. Right? So the Lord is talking to the church and trying to tell the church, wake up. Get away from this. In the book of Revelations, what does he say? Come out of her, my people. Yes. Come out of what? The religious systems. Yes. This word we go on, the people come great and strong. I love this word strong. It, it speaks of your bones being abundant or your bones being strong. Why is it so important that your bones are strong? Because your bones produce milk or produce 